good afternoon good morning or good evening uh, depending on where you are in the world uh, welcome to this first session on secular rights management for sap um, we are very happy very excited to bring this uh, out in a webinar format um, one of the things uh, is most uh, maybe most interesting for many people who are already using sap uh, would be to know that we are certified as of June this year as a certified SAP application, which means uh, you can go ahead and you know securely uh, uh, deploy this in any SAP uh, instance that you have. And of course, what is this all about? And what are we talking about here? How does it apply to you? Is what this webinar is all about. So. Um, I guess uh, it's about time to get started. Uh, a few housekeeping rules uh, just before we uh, get into the topic. Uh, anyone who wants to ask any questions are free to do so in the chat application. Uh, in the interest of time, we will be taking all questions in the chat application, uh, in the chat that you see on the right hand side itself. Uh, if we get time, we'll try and answer them as, as best as possible. If uh, you feel that any question has not been answered, you can just wait till the end of the day uh, and we will send you, a shoot it out over email. And uh, yes, so let's uh, uh, begin, uh, you know, understanding what we mean uh, when you're saying secular rights management for SAP. Um, in any enterprise information universe, there typically exists two types in, in at the highest level, two types of information. One is structured, which is what sits in applications, your databases, etc., like your ERP, like SAP or a CRM system, or any other transaction system, which is usually backed up uh, with a database at the back end where the data is stored in those in columns. So it's quite structured. The other kind of information that is encountered is unstructured or file-based information. And we often find a lot of this information in most enterprises. Now the aspect of these two types of information is that they keep exchanging form forms. So data is extracted from a uh, SAP uh, ERP system or customer data is extracted for a CRM system uh, to build a report, to create an aggregation, to do some data analysis, to put it into a, a slide deck that goes to somebody up there in the department or organization hierarchy. So very often a lot of uh, very confidential and critical data that resides in your applications or in your databases also tends to be extracted and also resides in an Excel sheet or a slide deck somewhere which gets sent out over email. So this data form keeps changing. Sometimes the reverse is true, a file is uploaded back into an enterprise system, but uh, that's another way that data keeps changing form. But most of the time you see the downloads and extracts from uh, enterprise applications being the predominant uh, way of data form changing. In fact, Gartner said that unstructured data can be almost 80% of an enterprise information asset. If you look back and think about it, it may not be too off the mark because almost every report or every extract that you do from an application ends up in an unstructured format. So everything that is in unstructured format is uh, you know, added on with other structured data that comes into an unstructured or file-based format. Now, there are certain risks around this unstructured formats. Uh, databases or applications are backed up. They are, they are you know, in a specific place. They are central repositories. They are one source of truth. If you ask a CIO, he will know exactly you know, who has it, who has access to it, where does it reside, where does it get backed up, what are the DR instances, what are the UAT instances. But how does that pan out for unstructured or file-based information? If I send a report to 15 people, they send it out to somebody else in their, uh, you know, organization or in their team. Uh, someone sends it out over email. Somebody puts it in a 
shared folder. Now this information is residing in 50 different places within 15 minutes of it being sent out. It's very hard for a CIO or anybody in the compliance team to know where this data lies, where does this report uh, you know, currently is accessible, to whom is it accessible, how can I control it, how can I ensure that it does not reach the wrong uh, hands. So that basically makes unstructured data a lot more risky. It's, it affects the uh, compliance and risk matrix tremendously. Uh, another aspect to look at is the application security part. People who are from uh, the application security uh, space would know that you know there are so many ways in which application data or applications are secured. There are role-based access controls. You could put a web application firewall in front of your actual application. You can do all kinds of database activity monitoring and privilege identity management. You can actually implement SAP's GRC controls. But that still leaves one big aspect of security unanswered, which is all the data downloads and extracts. Right? And this is a reality. We need those extracts because there's a whole lot of files and reports that are created offline, shared over email, uh, you know, so all sorts of cuts of this data needs to be created and that's all happening in offline file-based format. Data like this gets sent to other departments, it may go to various branch locations, it may go across public networks, it will go to external agencies, vendors, partners, auditors, regulatory, right? And it also resides in so many different uh, locations. It could be on local computers, in email inboxes. Somebody might be accessing their email on mobile. So they will have it on their mobile device. There will be a lot of data shared within an organization like file servers. And cloud is only increasing in its interest because there's a lot of organizations who believe that the cloud is the best way to share and collaborate uh, with remote locations, anywhere, anytime, and that only makes you know the de data residency uh, all the more a harder question to answer. And once these, if you think about it, once this data is extracted out of SAP, there are no SAP controls that are applicable. So all of the role-based access controls or uh, you know, individual uh, specific controls that are applied, applies only to the report or the uh, information that resides within SAP. As soon as it is extracted, all those controls are uh, unable to protect that information. In all in all, it essentially means that uh, to, a large ex to, to, to a large extent, Application security itself is incomplete if the data that is coming out of the application cannot be completely secured. Right? So that's one uh, sort of gaping hole that we see today uh, when it comes to information residing in applications. There's this shift uh, over the several years now towards a uh, much more core focused uh, uh, creating a smaller focused enterprise which uh, means that only more and more of the enterprise uh, services and capabilities are externalized, they are sent out to remote locations, uh, they are sent out to vendors, partners. The idea of creating a company that is focused only on its core competency uh, and you know everything else being outsourced or externalized uh, increases the amount of data sharing, increases the amount of information that is residing outside the core systems, outside the core enterprise application. And we have seen that growth in the past uh, you know several years. That information sharing, distribution, collaboration, and uh, the public network like the cloud-based services, email itself you may feel is a corporate service but most of the information 
travels on a public network, right? And it's vulnerable uh, to everything that uh, a public network is vulnerable to. So you might think that you sent out uh, an email to five people, but if these people are resorting in different locations, then if that information does travel outside the company, outside the corporate network, and often on public networks. The other problem with uh, the current, uh, you know, scenario is that uh, in information is very is controlled, you know, with very fragmented uh, policies. Right? When the application is holding uh, information, it is controlled by the policies that reside in the application. Now, if a report from SAP is extracted and saved somewhere in a local file share, then the policy that governs that information or the, or the access policy that governs that information has to be defined on that file share or on that file server. Once it is traveling across the network, then there will be other policies, either network-based or email-based policies that will govern who has access to that information. Say it is sent out to an external vendor. Now this becomes really uh, complicated because then it really depends on what that vendor's risk controls and security infrastructure really is. And it's hard enough to control information within an enterprise. It's even more difficult once it goes outside the enterprise. And of course, once it is at the vendor network, it's really vulnerable to you know, the security structure and policies of that network. Now what we're seeing is that in this scenario, a simple, a single report that was extracted from SAP, put on a local file share, uh, sent internally or shared outside with a vendor, has so many different uh, policy structures that need to be defined to ensure that it is secure. Now this is the same report, a single, say a customer performance report that is extracted from SAP and sent out to a external loyalty uh, vendor who needs to call up those customers and get them to buy or, or you know uh, use some service that this organization is selling, right? And it's a very simple use case. It's a single, simple report that comes out of an enterprise application. But then it transcends all these various boundaries and infrastructure elements and networks, and that makes it very difficult to control and to be sure of who access who has access to this information, when, where, and how do you ensure that it is not reaching the wrong people. This is the essential difficulty that we are facing when we see uh, any file-based data. Right, so that's the problem, what's the solution? Well, we believe we have a solution with secure rights management for SAP, where we say that you can actually use this to implement truly data-centric governance, which means that if there's one piece of data, it will actually have just one policy governing it. So that same report from SAP, if it was extracted, it had some access permissions, it was saved on a file server, it was moved around within the network, it was sent out over an email to a vendor, right? And then it resides and is stored at the vendor, you know, on the vendor infrastructure or file server. What if we can actually govern all of these different elements using the same policy? Right? That's what we mean when we say data-centric governance. Now, wouldn't that make life much easier, much simpler, and much more deterministic? You would have a clear view of what are your risks on that SAP report, in that customer performance report regardless of where it goes, even outside SAP. Right? That's what we're going to talk about. So essentially, once a file gets downloaded, it will be automatically protected, which means it has encryption, and it inherits all of the security and permissions that that same report has in SAP. Right? So who will use that file? What can they do with it? Can they edit it? Can they print it? Can they copy data out of it? 
when can they use it? Is it effective only for 10 days, one month? Where can they use it? Can they use it only within the enterprise network? Or can they use it outside the enterprise network as well? Right? All these policies can be defined and can be inherited from SAP itself. So whatever SAP provides can be inherited from SAP and then Secure will allow you to define other rights which you know over and above like the when and the where control. Right? So this makes the whole uh, security policy structure around this file-based data much, much more robust. Few more aspects of this tool. Uh, one is that once the information is protected, it stays protected. It's permanent. Unless someone intends to remove the protection, it will never come out. If someone tries to shake it off by trying to hack into it or do something with the file, they may damage it, but they will never be able to get access to data that they are not authorized to. Right? So the security is permanent. So even if I take a Excel file and try to save it as a PDF or some other format, it will still be secure. It will still have all the same access permissions and restrictions. If I couldn't print the Excel file, I wouldn't be able to print the PDF file. The other aspect is remote control. So uh, essentially, when I share a data or I send, send an information out on email, I will still control who has access to that information and what and where. So it's possible that I might have shared uh, something and I then decide to retract it. I decide that I don't want somebody to access it. So I can still do that remotely sitting on my machine and I can still control what is happening on that file in somebody else's desktop, file server, email inbox. Right? So if I decide that I want to take off uh, you know, access for some person, he will not be able to open the file the next time he tries. Right, so that's the remote control aspect for your information. Truly uh, powerful. Third and you know most uh, valuable is the audit trail. For the first time, you can actually track what is happening to your information. Most of the time, file-based information is very hard to know who has it, where have they forwarded it, uh, you know what are they doing with it, etc. With audit tracking. You know exactly who has opened the file, when, where, on what network, at what time, if they have sent it to somebody else, who else is opening it, when, where, etc. So you truly know what is happening to your information. It's all in a central repository and dashboard, so you can go and access it at any time. It's, uh, you know, it gives you uh, yeah, metadata and information about your information which you never had before. Essentially, you turn on the security and then you allow the file or the information to, to float wherever it needs to. It could be on a mobile device, it could be put on a cloud storage, it could go to external partners or vendors. Right. So we've had so many cases where customers have said that this is the most useful thing to be able to empower us to use the cloud. So I can put uh, confidential data that I need somebody to audit or review uh, halfway across the globe on a Dropbox or a box kind of service. It gets uploaded in a you know few seconds. The other person gets access to it almost immediately, and there is no threat of unauthorized access. There's no way that somebody can hack into even if they hack into my uh, cloud uh, account. They will never get access to that file. The file will authenticate, will ask for the user's uh, you know, uh, credentials before it will open and display the data within. Right? So this truly really becomes a smart file. Wherever it goes, whoever tries to access it, it will first ver verify that the user opening the file is an authorized user before it actually renders the data. Right. So in transit, in storage, in use, the information is always secure and always controlled. A little bit about you know how this is used and where can you know you 
apply these. So these are our experiences that we have encountered, and uh, you know maybe you can also take some inspiration from them. So HR teams typically have a lot of confidential enterprise information. They're usually working with employee data, uh, incentive data, payroll related information, and uh, this is always always confidential and critical. And a lot of this needs to be exchanged over email, sent, you know, transferred across departments. Need to be reports need to be reviewed. Uh, compensation plans need to be drafted and finalized. And all of this, you know, can be very, very secure if it all gets protected by rights management. Finance teams, of course, handle uh, the most critical information of an organization. There have been cases where uh, finance teams have, uh, you know, protected the information as it gets extracted out of SAP to ensure that there is absolutely no one else in the organization getting access, access to it other than the actual authorized financial reporting reconciliation team. So there is just no way that uh, any other department or user even within the organization should have access to that data and they can do that with rights management. Um, Few more are pricing, whether it is counting and distributor related pricing plans, which are secured, procurement related information, orders, purchases, RFPs, etc. Uh, legal handles a lot of uh, very critical information for an organization, contracts, templates, specific clauses, uh, either inward facing for employees or external facing for customers, vendors, partners, etc. Uh, we'll uh, uh, show you a few examples. So one of the cases was about stock reports, which were being sent out from a central head office. The production and planning team was sending out stock reports, daily stock reports to various branch and uh, inventory holding locations. Uh, so it was being sent out as an Excel sheet or multiple Excel sheets actually. So once they're protected, as, as soon as they're extracted, they can be easily shared over any network. Some of these uh, remote locations were very far away from uh, the smaller towns and cities, so that they were using public networks. There was no threat of using a public network simply because they were being protected at the uh, file level itself. Uh, in the past, this organization had found that the competitor is keeping uh, score as mu almost as much as each of the stock location of exactly how much product and how much stock they have. So that uh, was completely removed and you know there was nobody else who could have access to that information other than the internal uh, authorized staff. I spoke a little bit about uh, the corporate financials. There's a financial uh, reporting team that uh, extracts a monthly trial balance uh, from the SAP system and then does a lot of consolidation, various different cuts and costing and cash flow related uh, tracking based on that basic extract from SAP. Since the extract itself is protected and everything else including the, the entire value chain of reporting is also protected. So this was uh, you know, one case where uh, the information was so confidential that it was not even ex uh, exposed to other people within the finance team, let alone other teams and outsiders. A um, lot of this, uh, these reports were created for investors and for uh, uh, senior board members, so it was protected and ensured that nobody else could get access to that. Another example that we have encountered is about sales reports. So data extracts uh, protected uh, output from SAP was being uh, separated into various territories and then shared with their individual sales territory managers. And the source, the entire value chain of that information was protected because the extract from SAP itself was protected. So wherever that information went, it was only accessible to the 
white people. In the past, they found that this competitive, as like I said earlier, was also keeping as much, uh, you know, information about the organization sales, and that just completely stopped once it was protected. A few of our uh, large customer base, uh, well, uh, many of these are uh, in India, or some overseas as well. Uh, we have also had some industry recognition, so a lot of the uh, people who are keeping tabs on this technology space have understood what we do and have given us some recognition on that. One of the big ones that we are very uh, excited about is this Frost and Sullivan Growth Excellence Leadership Award. We just got that in July this year. Uh, they have recognized uh, Secure as a Growth Excellence Leader in the rights management space. So it really uh, gives us a great pleasure to, to get that award. We have a fairly large presence across the globe. Uh, we have uh, offices in uh, Middle East, Europe, Asia Pac, and North America. And uh, we have a fairly large uh, uh, user base as well uh, across customer across industry segments including manufacturing, banking, insurance, pharma, telecom and other services. Um, I didn't cover exactly how the technology works because there's a very good video uh, on our website so you can feel free to please go to our website www.seclore.com go to the resources videos section and you can see the SAP video right there. It will give you a very clear picture of how exactly this technology works, and uh, uh, you know you can get a clear view of what it will do. Uh, that's what I had uh, today for the uh, basic conceptual understanding of uh, what is what exactly we're talking about when we're saying rights management. Please feel free to go to the demo video. It will give you a very clear picture of how this works. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them now. So please type in any questions that you may have into your uh, chat box on the right hand side. Then look at quickly look at that and type in any questions that you may have. Okay, one of the questions uh, I just received is uh, what formats uh, do you support? So we form we support all the standard uh, you know enterprise document formats including PDF, Excel, Open Office. We even do uh, formats like AutoCAD. Those, those are not uh, typically uh, extracted from SAP, but you know we do a very very large over 60 plus formats. So rest assured. Uh, you know, most enterprise documents will fall into one of the supported formats. One of the other questions that I uh, see is uh, uh, how does this affect the user experience? Well, actually, this uh, doesn't have any impact on the SAP user experience at all. You download a report, you work with SAP the way you work, uh, Seclore does not interfere with that at all. Uh, when you download a report, it's only then that this technology will kick in. It will automatically protect the report before it comes on your local machine. So you don't have to do anything more. Uh, the access permissions will be defined in a central dashboard. They could be defined 
uh, based on the department's needs. It could be as is, uh, you know, implementing the permissions that are there in the SAP for that report. So all the users who have access to that report are the only ones who will have access to it once it is downloaded. There's a very interesting piece in the demo video that will, you know, explain how this works when a user moves from one department to another. If his access permissions change in SAP, they will automatically impact all the downloaded uh, data as well. One of the questions is what version of SAP does it support? This supports SAP ECC 6, Enhancement Pack 5 and greater. Yeah, so that's what we've been certified on. So if you, if you, one of the questions was how can we know how it technically functions with SAP? So we would have to get into a more detailed discussion. Uh, the demo video on the website will give you a quick introduction and then you can raise uh, a query and you see the email ID on your screen right now. So you can raise a query at that and someone, one of us will get back to you with a more detailed demo of the actual behavior of the system if you need that. All right, um, looks like uh, we don't have any more questions. So uh, many thanks for everybody who attended this. Uh, we will be having this available as a recording as well. So you can go and access that recording if you would like to go back and see something which you uh, want to. And uh, the, the video, like I said, the demo video is always available online. We'll be sending you a uh, Follow up email and we'll include the URL in that email as well. So if you don't catch the URL, that's fine. We'll be sending it to you over email. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. We're most happy to have done this and hope you uh, found something useful to take home from this. Thanks again. All the very best. Have a great day.